I'm Southern Cheyenne. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of Red Eagle Soaring, and I want to welcome each of you tonight to this very special performance that we have for you. It's the uh, Red Eagle Soaring Spring Play. Uh, we will also have another performance of it tomorrow night here at Act Theater. And then we're going to take this play to Olympia and perform it at the Olympia Library on June 23rd. So. Uh, first off, I'd like to honor and acknowledge the Coast Salish people of this land, whose land that we're on, and uh, I want to say thank you also to the uh, Haudenosaunee people of the uh, Great Lakes region uh, from whom this story originates. Uh, I want to honor uh, you tonight as well, so again, thank you. Also, our uh, funders and sponsors, we couldn't do this without them. So the City of Seattle, Office of Arts and Culture, also the Lummi Nation and Lummi Indian Business Council, the Seattle Foundation, and also ACT Theater. Uh, they've joined in a great partnership with us for the long haul here with Red Eagle Soaring. Uh, in their own words, they said we want to make ACT Theater feel like home for Red Eagle Soaring. So really uh, grateful, and I want to say thank you to Katie Burnett Act Theater and the staff uh, that's been uh, so so gracious to us. Also, uh, I want to thank the uh, Red Eagle Soaring Board of Directors as well uh, for your tremendous uh, support and your faith. Um, I also uh, would like to invite all of you to take part in the audience engagement that we have here at the end of this performance. Uh, it's part of the play, so please stick around. For that and also we have a very special presentation that we're going to do immediately thereafter so thank you for being here oh. so with that I would like to introduce to you a story of the Haudenosaunee people the boy who became a bear thank you Here's what he would do. 
If the boy moved too slowly or made a mistake, uncle would take a stick and he would beat the boy with the stick. He would punish him by beating him with a stick. And he said, I am the hunter. I bring the food into the house. I shall eat what I want and you can have what's left. And so the uncle would bring in the food, he would cook and eat the food, and he would leave scraps for the boy to eat. And sometimes there were no scraps at all. So this boy would be, well, this uncle would beat him and he would starve him. But worst of all, worst of all, he would talk to him like this. You're stupid, you're ugly, you're lazy, you're good for nothing. I don't care anything about you. Why do I have to take care of you? And he would be saying bad things about him and bad things that hurt his heart. And one day, the boy thought in his head, why is my uncle treat me this way? What have I ever done? But no matter what he thought, you can never imagine why his uncle was so mean to him. And so the boy is dead. He would leave his uncle's house and go live in the woods. But the boy thought, oh, How much worse is death than living like this? And so he left his uncle's house and walked into the woods. And the 
Bear Village. And the Bear people were very, very kind and loving to him. They gave him good food when he was hungry, and they gave him warm blankets when he was cold. Animals hate fire, and bears hate fire too. But they even let him go a little far at the back of the house so he could stay warm and cook food. They taught him everything they knew how to hunt, how to dig roots, find medicine, all the stuff you need to know in this world to live. But one day, as they were digging roots, As he was digging roots with them, he stopped and he looked at his hands. He could see that his fingernails were gone and he was growing claws like a bear. He could see fur growing upon his arms and legs like a bear. He ran down to the pond and he looked at his reflection in the water. He could see that his ears were moving from the side of his head to the top of his head like a bear. <laughs> And he was very happy. Woo hoo! <laughs> <laughs> now, since this boy was becoming a bear, he could see things he never seen before. He never smelled before. One day, the bear people were getting ready for their hibernation, their long sleep, when they slept all the way to the log. They were eating a lot of food to get ready for their sleep, and the boy was with them. The boy stood up. <laughs> And he skipped the air, and he said, My uncle, he's a hunter. He's coming. We have to run back to the village to hide. And so the bears run back to the village to hide. And the hunter passed them by. Well, the bears took their long sleep, and the boy slept alongside them. Left me. I didn't know why you would leave me. 
And so I went to the elders, and they told me that I should never have beaten you, or starved you, or said those terrible things. So I've been looking for you every day to tell you that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I hurt you, and I will never hurt you again. Please come back me. Please come back with me to the village. I will be a good uncle now. Please come back. The boy didn't trust his uncle, so he started to back away from him. But the bear said, "Boy." We bears know what is in the heart of people. Your uncle is telling you the truth. It is good that you go back to your people. It is good that you go back to your uncle. And so the boy listened to the bear people. While he was walking down the trails, heading towards the uncle's village, he saw his paws and claws disappear. His human hands returned. The fur left his body. His ears returned to the sides of his head. His human face returned. His bare face disappeared. And so, when the boy got back to the village, he taught all of his people everything he had learned from the bears. How to hunt, fish, dig roots, find medicine, how to live together in a good way. And so, these people no longer called this little one orphan boy, the one no one will take care of. They gave him the, a new name. They gave him the name Little Brother of the Bears. And that is all the Hot and Shoney story, the boy who became a bear.